Hi, second graders. Mr. Holly here. Um, we were only doing one uh, teaching video this week, and that was or for Wednesday. This would technically be the teaching teaching video for Monday. And instead of doing a teaching video, I decided that this is our last week of school, and I'm halfway through the Magic Treehouse number seven, Sunset of the Sabertooth. I figured I'll try to finish reading the last five chapters so that you guys can hear how it ends. Um, feel free to watch parts of this as you go through the week if you don't feel like sitting and listening to five chapters being read at once, but I wanted you to hear the last chapter book finished before the end of the school year. Because this is our last week of long distance learning and our last week of school until next school year. Um, I've enjoyed having all of you guys in the class. Wish the school year could have ended a little differently, but I hope we've learned some things. And um, remember that you can still contact me all throughout the summer. I'll try to respond as quick as I can. So we left off on chapter four, which was ending with the kids. Um, well, let me reread the last two pages. Hey, I wonder where this goes, said Annie. She held her lamp up to an opening in the wall. I'll check in the book, said Jack. He put down his lamp and flipped through the Ice Age book. I think it's a tunnel, she said. Be right back. Wait a second, said Jack. Too late, she had squeezed into the opening and was gone. Oh, brother, said Jack, sighing. He closed his book and peeked into the opening. Come back here, he said. No, you come here, said Annie. Her voice sounded far away. You won't believe this. Jack picked up his lamp and book. He ducked into a small tunnel. Wow, came Annie's voice. Jack could see her lamp flickering at the other end. Crouching down, he hurried toward her. At the end of the tunnel was a huge cavern with a high ceiling. Annie held her lamp close to the wall. Look, she said. Her voice echoed. Animals were painted on the wall in the strokes of red and black and yellow. There were cave bears and lions, elk and reindeer, bison and woolly rhinos and mammoths. In the flickering light, the prehistoric beasts looked alive. So Jack and Annie had made it into the Cro-Magnon's cave. <clears throat> they had borrowed some animal skin coats to keep themselves warm. Of course, Annie wandered off like she always does. And she found a spot where the uh, chrome magnets were making cave paintings of some of their some of the animals they have seen. Chapter five is titled Snow Tracks. Wow, what is this place? asked Jack. Maybe it's an art gallery, said Annie. I don't think so, said Jack. It's too hard to get to. He read about the cave paintings. These Ice Age beasts were painted 25,000 years ago. Cro-Magnons painted pictures of animals they hunted. They may have believed the paintings would give them power over the animals. Wow, look at this, said Annie. She pointed at a painting farther down the wall. It showed a figure with human arms and legs, reindeer antlers, and an owl face. It seemed to be holding a flute. Jack looked at the book again. He found a picture of the figure in red. Cavemen may have been led by a sorcerer or master of the animals. He may have worn reindeer antlers so he could run like a reindeer and an owl mask so he could see like an owl. There's a picture of them looking at the painting of the master of animals that was painted on the wall. Remember, they're using special stone lanterns that the Cro-Magnons used. What is it? said Annie. The master of the animals, said Jack. He's a sorcerer. Oh, wow, breathed Annie. That's it. That's what? That's who we have to find. Why? Maybe he's a friend of Morgan's, said Annie. Jack nodded slowly. Maybe, he said. Let's go find him, said Annie. They went back through the tunnel into the first cave. We better put our lamps back, said Jack. He and Annie blew out their lamps. They placed them back by the fire. Jack's backpack was on the floor next to the skins. He put the Ice Age book into it. How's Peanut? asked Annie. Jack looked into his pack. She's not here, he said. 
Oh no, cried Annie. She must have crawled out when we were looking at the paintings. Peanut, Jack called. Peanut, called Annie. Annie walked slowly around the cave, looking into the shadows. Jack peered around the fire and under each of the furry skins. Jack, come here, said Annie. She was standing near the entrance to the cave. The snow had stopped falling. In the snow were tiny tracks. Chapter 6 is titled Song on the Wind. Peanut's tracks, said Annie. We have to find her before she freezes. She wrapped her reindeer coat around her and headed across the snow. Jack pulled on his backpack and followed. The mouse's tracks led them between the fallen rocks and back onto the open plain. The wind blew harder. Snow swirled over the ground, covering the tiny footprints. I can't see them anymore, wailed Annie. She and Jack now stood in the middle of the plain. They stared at the windswept, windswept snow. The mouse's tracks had vanished. Yikes, whispered Annie, staring up. Jack followed her gaze. On one of the cliffs was a tiger, a giant tiger with two long, sharp fangs. A saber tooth, said Jack. I think the picture on the front cover is a picture of them seeing the saber tooth above them. I hope he doesn't see us, whispered Annie. Me too, Jack whispered back. We better head back to the treehouse. Jack and Annie stepped very softly across the snow. Then Jack glanced back at the cliff. The saber tooth was gone. Oh man, oh, oh man, he said. Where is he? Run to the trees, said Annie. He and Annie started running. They ran over the snowy plain, heading toward the tall bare trees in the distance. Suddenly Jack heard a crack. The ground caved in and Jack went with it. Annie fell beside him. They crashed down onto a heap of branches, snow and earth. They struggled to stand. Jack pushed his glasses into place. You all right? Uh, I'm sorry. You all right? He asked Annie. Yes, she said. They both looked up. They were in a deep hole. All Jack could see were the gray clouds moving overhead. This is a trap, Jack said. The crow magnets must have put branches over this hole. Then the snow hid the branches, so we didn't see them. There's no way out, said Annie. She was right. They were helpless. The pit was too deep to climb out of. I feel like a trapped animal, Annie said. Me too, said Jack. He heard a yowl in the distance. The saber tooth, whispered Annie. Jack pulled out the Ice Age book. He found a picture of the saber tooth. He read, the saber tooth was the fiercest beast of the Ice Age. It attacked humans as well as woolly mammoths and other large animals. Oh, brother, said Jack. Listen, Annie grabbed him. What? Jack jumped. I hear music. Jack listened, but all he heard was the wind. You hear it? asked Annie. No, said Jack. Listen carefully. He closed his eyes. He listened very carefully. He heard the wind, but this time he heard another sound too. Strange, haunting music. Ah! cried Annie. Jack opened his eyes. Staring down at them was a figure wearing reindeer antlers and an owl mask. The sorcerer, whispered Jack. Squeak! Peanut peered down at them too. There's a picture of the sorcerer peering down at them inside the trap. Chapter 7, The Sorcerer's Gift. Mm. I wonder if they get the M thing. The sorcerer didn't speak. He stared through the eye holes of the owl mask. Help us, please, said Annie. The sorcerer threw a rope into the pit. Jack grabbed it. He wants to pull us up, said Annie. Jack looked up. The sorcerer was gone. Where did he go? Jack said. Tug on the rope, said Annie. 
Jack tugged. The rope tightened. It began rising. I'll go first, said Annie cheerfully. Annie, this isn't a game, warned Jack. Don't worry, I'll be careful. Jack gave her the rope. Okay, but hold on tight, he said. Annie held the rope with both hands. She pushed her feet against the side of the pit. She rose into the air with the rope. She kept pressing against the side of the pit until she reached the top. Jack saw the sorcerer reappear and help Annie up. Then they moved out of sight. Jack was puzzled. The sorcerer had used both hands to help Annie. So who held the other end of the rope? Wow, came Annie's voice. What's going on, Jack wondered. The sorcerer came back and threw the rope down again. Jack grabbed it, and the rope started to rise. Jack held on tight. He started up. His hands burned. His arms felt as if they were being pulled out of their sockets. But he kept his hold on the rope and his feet against the side of the pit. At the top, the sorcerer pulled Jack onto the snowy ground. Thanks, said Jack, standing. The sorcerer was tall. He wore a long fur robe. Jack could see only his eyes through the owl mask. Hey, Annie called. Jack turned. Annie was sitting on a woolly mammoth. Squeak, Peanut was sitting on the mammoth's head. The mammoth looked like a giant elephant with shaggy reddish hair and long curved tusks. The other end of the rope was around the mammoth's huge neck. Lulu pulled us up, said Annie. Lulu? asked Jack. Don't you think she looks like a Lulu? said Annie. Oh, brother, said Jack. He walked up to the mammoth. Hey, mammoth starts with M, said Annie. Maybe Lulu's the special thing. I don't think so, said Jack. The great creature knelt down just like a circus elephant. Whoa, said Annie. She clutched the mammoth's ears to keep from falling off. The sorcerer helped Jack climb onto the mammoth. Thanks, said Jack. Then the sorcerer reached into a pouch. He pulled out a smooth white bone and handed it to Jack. The bone was hollow. It had four holes along one side and two on the other. Here's a picture of Jack and Annie sitting on Lulu, as Jannie named it, the woolly mammoth. And here you can see the, oops, here you can see the master of animals handing Jack the bone. Since it has holes in it, I'm almost thinking it might be some kind of musical instrument, like a flute. Oh man, I think it's his flute, said Jack. The book said they make flutes from mammoth bones. Jack tried to give the flute back to the sorcerer. Nice, he said politely, but the sorcerer held up his hand. He wants you to keep the mammoth bone, said Annie. Mammoth bone, whispered Jack. Hey, maybe this is the third thing. Jack looked at the sorcerer. Do you know Morgan? he asked. The sorcerer did not answer, but his eyes sparkled with kindness. He turned away from Jack and untied the mammoth's rope. Then he whispered in the ear of the giant woolly creature. When the mammoth stood up, Jack gripped Annie's coat to keep from falling off. He felt miles above the ground. He nestled behind Annie in the dip between the mammoth's head and his huge carved back. Curved back, sorry. The mammoth took slow, plodding steps across the snow, then picked up speed. Where are we going, said Jack, as they bumped up and down. To the treehouse, said Annie. How does he know where it is, asked Jack. She just knows, said Annie. Jack looked back. The sorcerer was standing in the snow watching them. But at that moment, the clouds parted and the sun came out. Jack was blinded by sunlight on the snow. He squinted to see, but the sorcerer had vanished. Chapter 8 is titled The Great Parade. Hmm. wonder what that means. The huge mammoth walked across the open plain. Look, said Annie. 
She pointed to a herd of elk in the distance. They had great wide antlers. There, said Jack, as a herd of reindeer came into view. They pranced grace gracefully across the snow. Then a woolly rhino joined them on the open plain. Then a bison. The elk, reindeer, rhino, and bison moved along with them at a distance. They seemed to be escorting Jack and Annie back to the treehouse. The snow sparkled with sunlight. This is a great parade, Jack thought. Fantastic. Oh, there's the titles. The title to the chapter. They were getting closer and closer to the grove of tall trees. I told you, said Annie. Lulu's taking us home. But just then, the mammoth let out a cry. All the other animals bounded off. Peanut started to squeak. Jack looked around. Behind them, the saber tooth was slinking across the sunlit snow. Now, if you have ever seen a uh, pet cat, a house cat, slinking is that thing they do where they crouch way low to the ground and they kind of walk slowly because they're about to pounce on something. Hopefully, they're not gonna. He's not gonna try to pounce on Jack and Annie or Lulu. The woolly mammoth roared and plunged forward. Jack and Annie nearly fell off. Jack clutched Annie. She and Peanut clutched the mammoth's shaggy hair. The mammoth thundered wildly over the ground. Ah! Jack and Annie yelled. The mammoth charged to the grove of trees, but the tiger had circled around the trees. He stood between the tallest tree and the mammoth. They were trapped. The saber tooth began moving slowly toward the mammoth. The woolly mammoth roared fiercely. But Jack knew a saber tooth could kill any creature, including a mammoth. The huge tiger's head was down. His burning eyes were fixed on the mammoth. His long white fangs glinted in the sunlight. There's a picture of the mam of the saber tooth cutting off Jack and Annie and Lulu from getting to the tree that had the treehouse. Hope they're okay. Chapter 9, Master of the Animals. The saber tooth crept forward. Jack stared in horror. Play the flute, whispered Annie. Is she nuts? Jack thought. Try, said Annie. Jack held the mammoth bone flute to his lips. He blew. The flute made a strange sound. The tiger froze. He glared at Jack. Jack's hand shook. The tiger growled. He took another step. The mammoth roared and stomped the ground. Play it, said Annie. Keep playing. Jack blew again. The saber tooth froze again. Jack kept blowing until he ran out of breath. The tiger snarled. He's still here, whispered Annie. Keep it up. Jack closed his eyes. He took a deep breath. Then he blew as hard and as long as he could. He covered and uncovered the holes on the bone. The music sounded strange, as if it were coming from another world. He's leaving, Annie whispered. Jack raised his eyes. The saber tooth was slinking off toward the cliffs. We did it, said Annie. Jack lowered the flute. He felt very tired. The mammoth waved her trunk happily. To the treehouse, Lulu, said Annie. The woolly mammoth snorted, then she lumbered off over to the tallest tree. From the back of the mammoth, Jack grabbed the rope ladder. He held it for Annie. She stroked the mammoth's giant ear. Bye, Lulu. Thank you, she said. Annie grabbed the rope ladder. Then she started up. Peanut climbed up, too. After they disappeared into the treehouse, Jack climbed onto the ladder. He looked back at the woolly mammoth. There's a picture of Jack. Whoops. Jack looking back at Lulu. <clears throat> Bye, girl, he said. Go home now and watch out for the saber tooth. The mammoth walked away into the sunset. When Jack couldn't see her anymore, he started up the rope ladder. He pulled himself into the treehouse. 
Ta-da, said Annie. She handed the Pennsylvania book to Jack. Jack smiled. Now he was positive they had found the third M thing. Their mission was complete. Before we leave, we have to give our coats back, said Annie. All right, said Jack. They took off their reindeer skin coats and dropped them to the ground. Burr, said Annie. I hope the Crow Magnum people find them. Jack stared out the window. He wanted to take one last look at the prehistoric world. The sun was setting behind the hills. Four people were crossing the snowy plain. It was the Crow Magnum family. Hey, shouted Annie. Shh, said Jack. The Crow Magnum stopped and peered in Annie and Jack's direction. We left your rainbow skins, reindeer skins, down there. Annie pointed to the ground. The tallest person stepped forward and raised a spear. Time to go, said Jack. He grabbed the Pennsylvania book. He found the picture of Frog Creek and pointed at it. I wish we could go home, he said. Goodbye, good luck, Annie called, waving out the window. She doesn't realize they were almost in trouble. The wind started to blow. The leaves began to shake. The wind blew harder, and the treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter 10, This Age. Birds sang. The air was soft and warm. I hope they find their coats, said Annie. Me too, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into place. Squeak! Hey, you. How did you find the sorcerer? Annie asked Peanut. Squeak! It's a secret, huh? said Annie. She turned to Jack. Where's the flute? He held up the mammoth bone. Then he placed it on the M carved into the floor. Next to the mango from the rainforest. Next to the moonstone from the time of the ninjas. So there's Jack holding the... Oops. Holding the mammoth bone. There's the moonstone. And there's the mango. Moonstone, man, moonstone, mango, mammoth bone, Annie said. We need just one more M thing. Then Morgan will be free from her spell. Tomorrow, said Jack. Annie panicked Peanut on the head. Bye, you, she said. She started down the rope ladder. Jack gathered his things. He paused and glanced at the mouse. She stared at him with big brown eyes. Thanks again for helping us, he said. Then he climbed down the rope ladder and jumped onto the ground. Jack and Annie ran through the Frog Creek woods and onto their street. Their neighborhood looked rosy in the sunset. It's great to be back in this age, Jack thought, warm and safe and almost home. I'm glad we don't have to go hunting for our dinner, he said. Yeah, Mom and Dad already did that, said Annie, at the supermarket. I hope they trapped some spaghetti and meatballs, said Jack. I hope they trapped a pizza, said Annie. Hurry, I'm starving, said Jack. They ran up their sidewalk and through their front door. We're home, shouted Annie. What's for dinner, shouted Jack. That shows I think they ended up with spaghetti and meatballs if we go by that picture. So that's the end of Magic Treehouse number seven. We don't know yet if they're able to find all four M things, and unfortunately it's so close to the end of the school year, I don't think I'll be able to help you figure that out. So next school year, hopefully we'll have access to being back at school, and hopefully libraries will be open. I want you guys to try to find Magic Treehouse number eight. See what that one's all about, where they end up going, and also see if they find the last M thing so that Morgan gets pulled out of this either trap or spell or whatever's happening with her. Miss you guys. Hope you have a great week. This was the video I'm doing for Monday. I'll do an actual teaching video on Wednesday. So I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Okay?
Hope you're having a good week. Oh, there we go. Hope you're having a good week. Go Cavs. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Miss all of you. Have a wonderful week, boys and girls.